Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new, my name is Tanel, and today we're going to master vitamin D for the skin and for health and vitality. The main question this time is, is vitamin D even a vitamin? Or is it more beneficial, more helpful for us to think of it as a hormone? An animal hormone that we are able to synthesize and the animals who we eat for that nutrition synthesize if they eat right and they're outside. We are going to cover the benefits of vitamin D, what makes it such a foundational nutrient while you're healing your skin or becoming more healthy, what are the signs of deficiency that you should be looking out for, should you supplement this? Very big question. And of course, my most recommended real foods, high quality foods that you can get vitamin D from. So most people already know this, that's the first thing you think about when someone mentions vitamin D. Oh, you get it from the sun. What they might not know is that your body, the surface of your skin, synthesizes vitamin D using natural sunlight, the UVB rays, but it also uses cholesterol as the raw material to put together this vitamin, this hormone. Now this changes the game. Now it's not only the sunlight, it's also how much cholesterol you have to synthesize not only vitamin D, but hormones. For men, that would be testosterone. Vitamin D really helps with fertility, with vitality, with hormonal health. And the same happens for women, of course. Your physiology would simply optimize and create female hormones like progesterone and so on. So you can see that this intriguing moment here already leads to the realization that food quality matters. If you are eating vitamin D foods, salmon being the number one that people know about as the vitamin D food, well, here's something interesting for you. There are many studies about this, but here's one that I pulled out when I was researching this deeper. Farmed salmon that they analyzed had 75 to 90% less vitamin D than normal natural wild salmon. When you are healing your skin, when you're coming out of bodily dysfunction, this chronically inflamed condition, and you're trying to get more of those omega-3s, vitamin D, vitamin A's, that makes a big difference, okay? And of course, depending on the farm, there are different practices. The worst case scenario is when you get a lot of antibiotics from the farmed fish, residues of pesticides, and sometimes the salmon you're eating might be colored. Wild salmon, on the other hand, is awesome for vitamin D. We'll talk more about this. Let's have an overview of the benefits of vitamin D, what it does for us, the positive stuff. First of all, we have wound healing, accelerated skin barrier repair. That is exactly what we're looking for. Whether it's cuts and it's wounds or it's rashes, we are looking to optimize and boost skin health, not only looking from the perspective of I have psoriasis, I have eczema. It's not about those labels, really. Those give you some tips, some clues of the pathology underneath. But what you're really wanting to do is just grow this health from the inside out. One of those ways is getting more nutrition. Vitamin D specifically helps you create better tissues, stronger skin more resilience, so accelerated wound healing. That is already awesome. The next side of that is that it reduces inflammation. Inflammation has its own place. It's needed to rush blood into somewhere that is injured, but if you're already in the cycle of gut inflammation, skin inflammation, and it just won't go away, this is already problematic. There is an injury that is just repeating, it's chronic, then vitamin D bringing that inflammation down is a very good thing. And the second part of that is that it inhibits T cell activation. Now, for some of you, this might be completely alien, foreign, but the more you read, for example, studies about atopic dermatitis, you will see this mentioned a lot. The T cell activation has to do with pathology behind that. So inhibiting that, that is awesome. That is exactly what we want. We want to keep inflammation low naturally for as long and as consistently as possible to let the body heal and repair and regulate itself. Next up, it uh, balances vitamin A. Now, vitamin A is going to deserve its own video, but here we have a little clue on how nutrients and vitamins and minerals work together in synergy. They either help each other in synergy or they regulate each other, they can oppose each other, and the more you look into this, the more you will learn that many foods that do contain vitamin D will also contain vitamin A, for example, or certain foods with certain minerals would have, you know, partnerships. You would get this synergy of different nutrients. 
that is the way to go. Much better than just supplementing with one vitamin and bringing your body even more out of balance. Now, vitamin D also helps with thyroid function, with bone health, and more specifically with calcium absorption. Now that is very good for bone health. People think of calcium, they think of bone health, but calcium also is needed to create a thicker, more resilient skin. This is something we want. But the other side to consider about that is if you are supplementing with isolated vitamin D in high doses, this can lead to the risk of calcification. And this is something you would want to avoid. So it's always better to go the natural route. Vitamin D also generally boosts hormonal health. It's great for fertility, for sex hormones, and for overall hormonal health. It also helps against many different specific diseases, including inhibiting tumor cells, which is great. Vitamin D also helps to increase quality of sleep. And now sleep will deserve much more attention. We'll talk about this way more. But more specifically, vitamin D participates in this whole process of producing melatonin. And melatonin is an interesting thing in this discussion. You know, most people think, oh, especially when you're living in the north, you have white skin like me, you would worry about your low vitamin D levels in the winter time. Well, the thing is, first of all, you still get vitamin D production when you go outside. Yes, the sunlight is different, but you do have snow and it still goes through the clouds, through the snow. It's still worth it to go outside and get that sunlight also during winter. But the interesting thing about us is that we thrive on melatonin during the winter. But this is a completely different subject. Just know vitamin D is awesome for helping you sleep. Vitamin D, besides strengthening your bone health, it can also strengthen your muscles. It can regulate insulin, regulate serotonin. There are many different benefits for vitamin D, but these are the main ones to understand about it. And so the other side of this is signs of deficiency. Skin issues, not only psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, acne and things like that, but also cracked lips, stretch marks, chronic skin infections that you just seem not to be able to get rid of, and something noteworthy, impaired wound healing. And this of course ties together with overall immunity. What is immunity? It is not just the ability to not get colds. It's also the ability to fight off infections, including infections in your gut or in your skin. So when your body for a while is already weak with its immunity, it can develop certain problems with inflammation, chronic infections, and so on. That is exactly the sort of cycle we're trying to get out of. And the best way to do that is, of course, to boost your body's ability to fight off anything that is pathogenic. Deficiency of vitamin D can also lead to hair loss, alopecia, problems with insulin, metabolic issues. This deficiency can also lead to sleep problems. We already covered that. But also during the daytime, you might develop mental health issues. Very rampant nowadays. You can get anxiety, depression, anything to do with your brain. And besides weak bones, weak skin, you can also develop stiffness, overall tiredness, and reoccurring colds, being sick all the time. And as you can imagine, the lack of sunlight, lack of high quality animal nutrition is what creates this risk of deficiency. And even if you go outside, you might be covered with sunscreen, which will block your body's ability to naturally create enough vitamin D for itself. But over time, you'll also want to heal your gut because if your intestines are inflamed, for example, or you have problems with certain organs, you'll have problems with some absorption, some utilization, some regulations with nutrients as well. So as always, none of these videos alone will give you that one little secret. The secret is all included in my Skin Healing Online course. First link down in the description. So always, always look at these things in one big system because that is the biological reality we're in. And the best sources of vitamin D, first of all, sunlight and cholesterol. So there's two parts to this. First of all, you will want to have enough sunlight, especially in the morning. So when you're planning your days, you're planning what you're going to do. First of all, maybe you want to eat something, but then step outside. Go outside first, and then when you've had enough sunlight for the day, you go inside and you work and you do the indoor things. Now, I understand that not everyone has the opportunities that for me are pretty much normal. During the summer, I can just go in the backyard way near the edge of the forest and I can just go naked and absorb the sunlight over my whole body for 20 minutes. That is ideal. 
So maybe you also have this chance, but you've never thought about that. You've never considered actually doing it. I do recommend it. But what I don't recommend is using sunscreen, especially the generic kind. The one that I use is tallow and I don't use it to block out the sun. It just has a natural SPF to it. You can also use olive oil, things like that, zinc oxide if you're very, very sensitive to sunlight. But overall, you do not want to wear sunscreen. You do not want the window to filter out some UV rays. You just want to go outside and get that sunlight. And the second side to that is getting enough cholesterol from your foods. So you're already eating that fatty meat or egg yolks or dairy or indeed the oily fish. And with that, you're usually getting enough cholesterol as well for the body to take that as raw material and create even more vitamin D for itself if it needs that. And that leads us to seafood, fish, especially that fatty, oily type of fish. Now, most people will consider salmon to be the king of this, but we already covered that. It can be problematic. What my first recommendation would be is mackerel. In the summer, I went to visit some friends in the Netherlands and it turned out that there it's very common to just get mackerel for a very good price. It's wild, it's delicious, it has a lot of vitamin D. And I think the best mackerel that I've ever had was in Finland, in Helsinki, where my friend Tommy made us some nice oven mackerel and that was delicious. That's something that even people who don't really like fish might appreciate. So try to prepare it in a way that you'll actually enjoy it. Other species of fish to choose from include cod, both the cod itself and the liver, cod liver, cod liver oil. So you can supplement with the oil or you can just eat the whole thing with its own natural oil. That's what I usually do. It also has vitamin A and vitamin D in it. You have herring, you have tuna, sardines, swordfish. Now sardines usually come in a can and there is something to consider about that. You have aluminum, you have BPAs on the edge of it, so it's not optimal, but uh, hey, see what you can get. And besides the fish itself, the flesh, you can have the liver, the roe of the fish is really nice. Some people call it caviar. And one of my favorite skin health foods, oysters. High quality oysters, slunk them down, delicious. And for the ones who don't really care for seafood, look for high quality dairy. You can get raw milk, especially raw goat milk, extremely good for the skin. Butter, cheese, yogurt, kefir, but also grass-fed beef, grass-fed beef liver. And when you are visualizing these different foods, you can imagine that if you have a choice between lean and fatty, if it's high quality, a healthy animal, you will want that fat to get more vitamin D. And not only the fatty tissues, but also egg yolks, for example, pasture-raised, high quality eggs, I eat them raw, or if you want to, you can fry them, but just fry them sunny side up, so you still get all the benefits of that raw egg yolk, including vitamin D. And as you can imagine, in nature, in food, nothing really exists in isolation. Everything works together in synergy, including these foods. You will get vitamin D, vitamin A, you will get magnesium, you'll get sulfur. In eggs, you have both sulfur and vitamin D. You will get K2. And you can see in the pharmacy, people who really are fans of this supplemental vitamin D, even they have started to include vitamin D3 with vitamin K2 together because they understand and realize that there is a synergy happening there. And the strange thing about the vitamin D supplements is that when you really look into it, you'll see that many of those supplements are made of sheep wool or they are fake or ineffective like the vegan kind, D2, and some of those can even be potentially harmful. So I don't actively recommend it. The type of supplement that I would recommend is food-based. So for example, you might not be eating cod liver oil all the time or the liver itself, but you might eat it once a week, once a month, and you can treat that food as a supplement. Same goes for oysters. Many of you have never maybe even had an oyster. So you can treat that food or a piece of raw liver, quality grass-fed raw liver. Most people have not ever even tried that. So this would be my way to recommend the supplemental kind of vitamin D. And it seems to me now you know enough to use this knowledge to your advantage. You know which foods to prioritize. You know how to increase those levels of vitamin D while you're healing your skin. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, because this is a community I will read and answer. Stay strong, stay consistent. The next video to watch will appear on the screen now. 
and I will play some jaw harp for you. Yeah,